All right, guys, this is our third three-phase resistive load calc. Uh, this one is running off of 2.8. So we've got line, line one here, line two, and line three. And we've got 2.8 volts, three-phase coming into each of these circuits. All right, so that's our line voltage. So from any line to line, we have 2.8. So from here to here, here to here, and here to here, all those voltages are 28. So first step here would be to bring our 28 volts with our line voltage right across. Okay, once we've got the 28, uh, the next thing we need to look at is whether it's a Y circuit or a delta circuit. So the Y circuit, we are going to treat this guy as a series circuit. And the delta we're going to treat as a parallel. Okay, that way we know that um, for the Y, if we think of it as a series circuit, then I line is equal to I phase. And with the delta circuit, V line is equal to V phase. Okay, so that means that this voltage here on the phase is equal to 208 volts. Voltage is, is the same in a parallel circuit. Okay, so that's our second step. Now, on the Y circuit, this guy is going to be 208 volts divided by the magic number of root 3, which gives you 120 volts from any line to that center tap. Okay, so phase voltage here is 120 volts. Okay, if we want to keep track of this, then we can see that this voltage here is 208 volts from line to line. And this voltage right here is 120 volts. Okay, this voltage here we can see is 28 volts. And this voltage is the exact same voltage. We're looking at the exact same points as our line values when we're looking at the phase values. Okay, hopefully that helps you out there. Now the next step we need to do is find our phase current. So we're going to break each of these three phase circuits down into just a simple Ohm's law equation. Here we have 120 volts divided by 20 ohms. Okay, that's going to give you 6 amps. Here we've got 208 volts on the phase divided by 15 ohms. Each of these are balanced circuits, so each of those resistors is 15 ohms. So we now have 208 ohms. 208 volts over 15 ohms. Okay, that gives you 13.86 amps. Okay, next one we've got is 120 volts divided by 12 ohms. Okay, and that's obviously going to give us 10 amps. Okay, now we're keeping track of um, all of our currents there. So inside this guy, we've got 10 amps on the phase. Inside this guy on the phase, we've got what, 13.86. Okay, and then inside this circuit on the phase, we've got six amps. Now, you can see that with the series circuit, there is only one path for the current to flow. So outside here on the line, we're also gonna have six amps. Okay, here, again, there's only one path for current to flow. So 10 amps is also going to be on the line. So this line current is going to be 10 amps. This line current is going to be 6 amps. Okay, now looking at the delta, there are two paths for current to flow when it gets to this junction here. So your line current is going to be greater. Okay, so this value right here is going to be 13 0.86, the value that we had inside the circuit, times root 3. And that gives you 23.97 amps. So on the line current for this delta, it's always higher than the phase current. And it gives us root 3 of 13.86, which is 23.97. Now, 
we've got three resistive loads. If we had different animals in the circuit, like a coil or a capacitor, we would have to do uh, make use of Pythagoras. But because they're all resistive circuits, they're basically all in phase, so then we can just add up all of our line currents. Okay, so this line current here is going to be equal to 6 amps plus 23.97 plus 10 amps, okay? All that together, right? Here we've got 16 and basically 24, so that value is essentially 40 amps. Okay, so now we have our total line current, and then for each of the values below, uh, all we have to do here, so for any of these power values, whether we're looking at um, this total here, or this one for the Y, or for the delta, or for the Y, all of those values, right, so all of our power values, we're going to look at V line times I line times root 3. Or if you're using your phase values, you can use V phase times I phase times 3. There are three single phase loads there. Okay, I tend to use the V line times the I line times root 3. Okay, so if we're looking at uh, the totals there, then it looks like uh, our line voltage is 208 volts. We're going to multiply that by 40 amps, and then we're going to multiply that by root 3, and that gives us uh, 14,410.66. So 14,410.66. Six, six. These are all in watts. Okay, the next one, we've got 208 volts on the line, and our line current is 6 amps, and we're going to multiply that by root 3, and that gives us uh, 2,161.59. And I got 0.59. That's in watts as well. Okay. Now, if you're looking at the answers that I have on the website, they're a little bit different. Uh, I'm using a different calculator today, so everything's a, a just a little bit different. Um, and I'm using the full root 3. I'm not um, dropping it down to 1.732. So the values here in this video will be slightly different than uh, what you'll see on the answers on the website. Okay, next one, we have 208 volts. Uh, line current is 23.97. And we're going to multiply that by root 3, and that gives us 8,635, so 8,635, uh, and what did I get for decimal? I got 0.58. Okay, last one for the last Y load, it's 208 volts on the line. Line current is 10 amps, and we're going to multiply that by root 3, and that gives us 3,602. Uh, and I got 0.66. Okay, if you add up the 3,602.66 and this value, 8635.58 and the 2161.59, you will get a value that's very close to the 14,410.66. Right? Keep in mind rounding and everything. Um, we went through all of our steps here. This was step one to find the line voltage. Second step here was to find our phase voltage. Then we found our phase current, right? Step four here was for, to find each of our individual line currents. Step five, we added all of those up. And then step six, we found all of our individual power values. Um, and we found that using this equation of V-line times I-line times root three. Okay, the last thing to note uh, for each of these questions, I'll ask you for the power factor. Well, they're all resistive loads, so they're in phase, so the power factor is 1. All right, guys, go back to uh, the YouTube channel and then go to uh, the fourth example, and we'll start to get into some RL circuits.